Welcome to this episode of Manufacturing Live. To briefly introduce myself, my name is David McBride, and I'll be your guest host for this episode. I'm a partner sales manager expert for manufacturing at Dasso Systems, and I'm part of a growing team of experts who are promoting the 3D experience works portfolio of manufacturing products. As you can tell from my accent, I'm British and I'm based in the United Kingdom. My background is in manufacturing engineering, and in particular programming NC, CNC machine tools. I've worked in industry for companies who manufacture textile machinery, machine tools and forklift trucks. I've used CAD CAM software for the majority of my career, as both as a user directly and also supporting role for software resellers and also software vendors. So that's enough about me. Joining me for today's episode is Lucas Sadin, who is principal and founder at S Concept. Welcome, Lucas, and thanks for joining us for this episode. Thank you, David. No problem. So just for our audience, could you give me a brief overview of what S Concept produce? Yeah, of course. Um, so S Concept is a company that builds furnitures and prototypes. We kind of make a bit of everything. So um, we do 3D modeling as well as machining and woodworking and metalworking, a bit of everything to be able to build mostly high-end furnitures as well as different prototypes and objects depending on the client's requirements. Okay, so you do commissions for people, etc. Yeah, we do a lot of commissions as well as we do our own design and production. And we're based in Paris, France. Okay. And we try to do most of the thing we product, most of our products in house in our workshop. Ah, okay. Okay. So before we go into detail about the type of work that you do, I'd like to get a sense of of your background. So, so where the passion for manufacturing comes from, for, for setting up your own company, for producing the parts that you do. So, so when you were at school, was this an interest when you were at school? Yes, I've always been passionate about like understanding how everything that surrounds me is built and manufactured. And I did like a scientific high school and then went to engineering school where I enjoyed but it wasn't um physical enough like i was missing a lot of like productions and like um down to earth production so i left engineering school after three years and i left uh, to go to a design school called strat which is called in paris where i did a 3d modeling degree uh, so we're doing mostly like 3d modeling um, on computers like cad as well as doing 3d model making so like prototypes and different like model making for mostly the car industry. Ah, okay, okay. So so that was your introduction into the CAD world, basically. Yeah, I. So the funny thing is, the first CAD uh, software I used was um, a software by Dassault System called Cosmic Blobs, which was out like in two thousand four or something like that. So it was like kind of a, a clay modeling software for kids, ah. uh, which would be the equivalent of SolidWorks app for kids right now. And, and then after, of course, when I was in engineering school, I started using SolidWorks. And then further on in design school, I was using SolidWorks and other softwares as well. Okay, so, so once you uh, moved on from, from your engineering high school, did you then go to university? Yeah, so, so the, the um, engineering school is, is a university. Ah, okay. Engineer, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that was based in Paris? Yes, as well, yeah. Uh, okay, so so when you got to the end of your uh, university degree, where did you then go? Did you go into industry or did you go off to do something else? No, so during my three years of uh, my three year degree in my design school for three modeling, every year we have we had to do um, an internship. So I did multiple internship in the concept car industry as well as in the um, bottle making for like the perfume industry, like prototyping and at Dassault System as well. I did an internship uh, in Boston. And then after my three years ended, I directly started my company as Concept. Ah, okay. So so just just to go to the fact that you worked at Dassault Systems, 
So, so what did you do at Dasso Systems and where were you based and, and what were you introduced to? So I was based in Waltham next to Boston okay. and I was working for the 3D Experience Lab uh, there, working for Abhishek Bali and Marie Planchard. And I was doing, um, I was working on a little bit of everything, but I was mostly helping to manage the 3D Experience Lab, uh, which is a fab lab. Uh, working with the Fab Foundation and the course of the Fab Foundation, how to make almost everything. As well as I was working for SolidWorks Apps for Kids, I was working on different projects and I was kind of like, you know, moving around and doing a lot of different things within the company. So I guess that's that's what you do when you're doing a, a placement at a company. You go around the different departments and get involved as much as possible to see which areas excite you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you, I was lucky enough to be able to see a lot of different things, a lot of different softwares, as well as learning a lot about like uh, fab labs and projects and like machining and all of those things. And it was like it was an amazing internship, and I was lucky enough to learn a lot of things there. And to be based in the US was was nice. So was that your first introduction to machining? Yeah, I think it was my. It wasn't my first introduction, but it was the first time I was like really like managing a fab lab and being like the one responsible for the machines mm -hmm. and helping the others of like to help them to produce what they wanted and to be able to answer the questions of like how to build, how to use a 3D printer, uh, how to design a project and all of those things. Excellent. So, so once you'd finished that internship, obviously you went back to Paris. Yes, I went back to Paris, back to my last year of school. <laughs> uh, and from there, where did you go then? Was was that the point where you decided you wanted to set up your own company? Yeah, so yeah, at the end of my internship, I went back to, to my design school for my last year. And towards the end, I knew I wanted to have my own company. I, I, the thing is, I wanted to be able to do everything from start to the end in a project. I wanted to be able to design it. I wanted to be able to be doing the 3D models as well as the production. And the only way to do that <laughs> is to have your own company. I didn't want to be able, I, I didn't want to be like stuck in a box in a company where I was like either doing like only woodworking or only metalworking or only like sanding. I wanted to be able to do a bit of everything. And for that, the idea was to have my own workshop and my own company. Uh, with my machining, with my machines, and be able to, you know, be doing everything in different like fields and different materials, different designs. And it was kind of the only solution. So we're just seeing we just seen a video of you, you uh, in your workshop. So yeah, the, there's a lot. It was a lot of skills. Like oh no, okay. <laughs> my, my 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 first workshop was in my mom's garage. Ah. <laughs> so at, at the end of my uh, studies, I kind of turned my my mom's garage into a small workshop, and I was like, what I was studying, I was like already like adding small machines and trying to start building stuff by myself. And after I finished my school, I officially started this concept, and I I took me a while to find like a building to be able to build a real a real professional workshop where you could have like. I could have like bigger machines and everything I needed to be able to start my company and develop myself. So the, from, from the video, we saw a range of skills. So, so we saw you turning. So I'm guessing you turning in metal there. Yes, I do metal turning. I do wood turning as well. Um, so my workshop, I have a big workshop where I have a lot of different like areas and different types of machines. So I do a lot of traditional machining um, like Lathe, like uh, using lathe and using a milling machine as well, and but I also have like all the wood, the woodworking machines, uh, like a planer, like a big saw, and all those things. And I do so. I have, I have a wood shop and I have metal shop, as well as I have um, a painting booth and a three D printing shop, a small one, and a CNC machine. <laughs> Okay. So, so, so there's a real range of, of skills there. So where did you acquire these skills from? Is this something that you've learned over time or is it something you've actively sought out? So for instance, did you go and get some training for woodworking and did you go and get some training for metalworking? 
so I, some of my skills, I learned them in school. Uh, when I was doing model making in school, you learn a lot about different materials and different ways to build with uh, manual machine as well as like CNC machining and, and 3 printing. But after that, I tried to learn woodworking mostly by myself. And some of the things I do, I did take like lessons. Uh, for example, wood turning. I, I knew I always wanted to be able to do some wood turning. And I actually took some lessons with a professional to be able to learn. And then I worked on it by myself as much as I could. And so I, I, tr I try to learn new skills all the time. And now even lately, I added welding to my skills. <laughs> um, and I'm still learning and still trying to be better at it. But yeah, I, some, some of the stuff I learned them while I was studying, but most of them I learned them afterwards, either by myself or watching YouTube or like calling like and visiting like workshops and talking to people who are like been doing those things for years and trying to learn from them. And this, this range of skills enables you to produce multiple different components out of different materials, I guess. So that some of the things that, that we'll see later on that you design have elements of metal and wood and plastics. Yeah, yeah. I think what, what I like when, when I start a project is being able to use different materials as well as different type of machine, uh, like production. And so I can do like molding and do like resin pouring as well as doing like metal turning and CNC machining in big like wood projects. And yeah, I, I like being able to, to make a project really out of a lot of different materials and processes of fabrication. That's I think where my company is interesting is where you can do most of like almost everything, <laughs> not everything, but <laughs> a lot of things in the same workshop. Yeah, it's unusual, especially when it's one person like you are at the moment doing all of these things. Yes, it's a lot of work, and and but it's it's what it makes it like very interesting for me being able to like in the same week or in the same months I can do so many different projects from like metal parts for machine as well as doing like a table and lamps, uh, doing like metal wood uh, resin pouring and like. Uh, silicone molding, like kind of everything. And that's what I like about my job is every day is different. So so your design process is, did you start off designing things manually or have you always used uh, design tools like CAD software? The thing is I'm, I'm bad at drawing. I've always been bad at drawing. <laughs> so CAD softwares were for me the best thing ever because I could now use a computer cam to be able to help me uh, show what I wanted to sh to say within drawings. But the thing is, when I do a drawing, like I'm I'm the one who understands it mostly. And it's hard to make the others understand because I'm not a good drawer. Uh, so CAD was really helpful because it really helped me show and really express what I wanted to do um, in a better way. So I, I, pretty early on, I started using uh, CAD softwares. And, and I guess that the, the uh, working at the uh, the 3D Experience Labs helped somewhat in, in being exposed to those things. Yes, it helped a lot, and it helped me um, figure out what I wanted to use as softwares, and how I could integrate the whole the software part within my workshop and within my job. And because it helps in so many ways to be able to do 3D modeling and uh, in time, but not as not only in time, but it helps in a lot of ways. Uh, so it was good to be able to do that and to implement 3D modeling, um, as you can see on, on the video right now, different projects that I do like. So those are mostly virtual twins because I do virtual twins of my objects. Most of the time I do 3D modeling and then I actually build them. And it's really helpful to have a 3D model, like 3D modeling skill added into what I build. It's very interesting that, that as a small business, that, that, that the CAD side of things, the, the virtual twin side of things is a big part of what you do. Um, 
a lot of companies I've seen previously don't usually get involved in, in that sort of uh, scenario as far as software is concerned until they're much further down the line. And it's, it's good to see a small company doing it. I, I guess it helps in multiple ways being able to do these things in a virtual environment. Yeah, it helps in multiple ways. But for example, when I do like CNC machining, I don't really have the choice that than just using a 3D software. So I do the 3D modeling, then I use my CAM software when I'm using NSR uh, by Delmia. Uh, that's a system solution uh, to be able to to use and to do, like for example, um, CNC machining way faster. The thing is, because I'm by myself, sometimes it's nice to be able to have like the the CNC machine that is just behind me, <laughs> a CNC machine working while I'm doing something else. And for that, having like an extra arm and an extra, a machine working at the same time that I'm doing something else is super useful. So I had to learn like CNC machining and CAM for being able to like design the toolpath, uh, as you can see on the videos. But yeah, it's it's such a big gain of time as well as like, you know, you do less errors because I have a virtual tune of my CNC machine mm -hmm. and it helps me like being sure of what I'm doing is without any mistakes. So I can make sure everything is fine and everything is good before I start the machine. Super, super interesting that, that the ability to model things and then take it into this virtual environment that represents your machine makes life so much easier for you. It does and it's faster is one of the aspects, but a huge aspect is you don't waste as many like end meals and materials and all of those things. Because when you do a mistake in CNC machining, for example, it, it can be a quite expensive mistake uh -huh. <laughs> very easily. And having like a full virtual twin of my machine and what I'm doing on it helps me being sure that no mistakes are gonna happen because I know exactly what's gonna happen before I even like start the machine. So it's, it's helpful because it avoids mistakes and so it's less expensive and as well as faster. Yeah, and, and do you find that by producing this virtual component, I'm presuming you're using SolidWorks. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am using SolidWorks. And sometimes uh, the X apps as well, like X design a lot for okay. fast prototyping, it's so quick. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it, do you use these virtual models to show your clients what you're going to manufacture for them? I do, I do, I use, um, I use the SolidWorks Visualize as well to do like 3D rendering. But for example, with the platform, what's so nice is I'm able to do my modeling in SolidWorks, for example, I can then import it in Delmia for the machining. But I can also, because everything is on the platform, I can just show them, show the 3D model on my phone because it's already in the platform. And now with like share and markup, for example, I can just send 3D models to my clients just to make sure that's exactly what they want. So to go back and forth to the clients is so much faster when you have access to a platform where you can just send 3D plays and the clients can have access to a 3D model where they can just give their opinion on it without having to, you know, make the piece and make sure it's good. <laughs> and then if it's not, scrap it and start a new one. We saw in, the, in that last video that, that you were using your phone to access some of the, the models that, that you produce. Uh, yeah, do, you find, yeah, do you find it really useful to be able to do that type of thing anytime you need to do it? It is super useful because, for example, when, it, when I'm in my workshop, where I am right now, and I'm building something, either I use like SolidWorks drawings to be able to have the plans and everything I, I want to like implement in the product, the project, but I can also just take out my phone and go on the platform and just take the 3D model and make sure, okay, that's how it looks. Okay, that's what I'm supposed to do here. And to have access to to all of that in the workshop on your phone is easier than going back and forth to your computer and like, you know, like starting SolidWorks and making sure that, okay, that's what I wanted to do. Or well, it's just like a quickly reminder of, of a little detail you may, you might have forgot. Uh -huh. 
so it's easy and and another <laughs> advantage is like you know even like when i'm with friends and they ask me like oh, what are you working on right now i can just take out my phone and say oh that's what i'm doing right now and I have the three model on my phone even if i'm on the other side of the world yeah yeah i can see how it will be extremely useful um so you mentioned markup and share for your for your customers um yeah. could you for, for the audience could you just explain what that allows you to do uh, it allows me to send a link to my clients where they can just open the link and open a 3d model of the object i just sent them and they can actually mark do markup on it and they can just like you know check everything that they wanted to see on the 3d model without having to you know send like in this stl or something weird that they're going to be able to open they can just see the 3d model through a link and they can they can give you feedback yeah directly in the model and you can then open that up and and then implement any changes that are necessary yes yeah, it's, it's like a shared pdf within a company but only for 3d model so so this this scenario of using solidworks and the 3d experience platform obviously um you were exposed to solidworks prior to setting up s concept how did you find implementing the SOLIDWORKS and the 3D experience for to actually use it as for a job of work? So the thing is, I I started as concept, and because I was ending my my school, I, I I just graduated. I was out of like the student program for for, for 3D modeling and so on SOLIDWORKS. So I called the people I used to work with at Dassault System and say, okay, I'm starting my company, I need a software and I'm, I wanted to use SOLIDWORKS. And they say, okay, there's an, there an entrepreneur program, there's a startup program at SOLIDWORKS. And I just took part of it. So what's amazing with a startup program with SOLIDWORKS is you have uh, decreasing prices. Um, I mean, it's like, for example, the first, it's a three-year program and the first year is free. And then you get like, I think 70% off and 50% off in the third year. So it helps you start your company without having to, you know, spend a lot of money right away on the softwares. And so it's, really, it's super, super helpful because for small companies like mine, you know, when you start a company um, where you don't have a lot of money at first, you can still use professional softwares and have everything you need to, to develop your companies. And the good thing is because you start with, a powerful and a big program like SolidWorks, you can then develop yourself and develop your companies with everything you need to. You don't have to to switch after because it's not powerful enough, or you're missing tools and things like that. Mm -hmm. You already have everything you need, and you have access to, to different applications on the platform, don't you? So you yeah, you have the full platform. You have SolidWorks. You have Visualize. You have the X app, like X Design and X Shape, and and I think, yeah, I think that's all. I think, and then, then now, now that I have a big CNC machine, I add Delmia solutions uh, from that sort of system, uh, mostly NSR, which is for CAM and doing like uh, tool tool path for the CNC machining. So that's the shop floor programmer, isn't it? Yeah, that's NC shop floor programmer, exactly. So, so you say you've got a, a CNC milling machine. Yes. A wood, a woodworking milling machine, yeah. Okay. So, so um, when we've talked previously, you said that one of the ethos is behind your company is that you try and be as, I'm going to say, eco-friendly as possible. You try and source things locally so they're not traveling big distances. So your machine tool, for instance, is that something that comes from a local company? Yeah, my CNC is made in Le Havre, which is north of France, <laughs> and and I'm most. I mean, a lot of my machines are French machines that were made in between the '60s and the '80s, I'd say. And CNC machine is way more modern, but it's a French company that does the machine. And yeah, in everything I build, I try to be. I, I try to take all the materials that I use as locally as I can, and I try to work with small company like mine around me. And trying to do like you know when I have like some, some I, I try to do everything in house and try to do nine 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 
percent of the projects within my workshop. Sometimes it's not possible when I try to work with you know local companies um, to help me, and all my material is local. And the thing is, I'm. I said that to, I was talking in the 3D Experience Forum for that system two weeks ago, and I was saying that when I want to buy something, I don't like when the, pro the product I want to buy has traveled more than me in the last year, for example. So yeah, I, I try to, to do as much as I can within the workshop and try to work with local companies and local materials when I can. Yeah. Uh, it's a good ethos to have, like you say. You don't want to buy something that's travelled halfway across the world. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to buy like. I've I've seen tables that are like the wood is from France, but the process is like uh, European, like East European countries that build the table. So the, the wood comes from Paris, I mean, from France, goes like to yeah Eastern Europe, then come back to France to be sold, and then travels again to the client, and I'm like. Why would you do that? When you have the wood in France, you can have the workshop in France, and you can have like it delivered. I always say to my clients that like most of their projects are built like around the corner of the street, because you know, I'm, for, for my Parisian clients. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm guessing that you said you wanted to manufacture as much as possible in house. That's the reason why you need that big range of skills that you've developed over time. Yes, yes, it is. Is it's. it's it, it, when you want to do everything in-house, you have two options. One, you do only projects that you are able to do with, like, within your capacities. Um, for example, if you're a woodworking workshop, you can only do 100% woodworking projects. But I wanted to be able to have like larger skills and build like projects where you have dozens of different skill sets into it and different materials and all that. So that's why I needed to be able to have different area in the workshop where I can do like welding and metalworking in one, in one room and be, being able to do like a full wooden countertop in the other room and then being able to do all the varnish inside my painting booth. And if you are like weird shapes to have to cut out in it, you have to be able to CNC machine it. So, so that's why I have the CNC machine. <laughs> so yeah, it's, the thing is it never stops, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> No, and, and we saw from some of those images that we saw previously, some of the parts that you manufacture, some of them are very obvious, like tables, um, but some of them, like this one here, is this some sort of, well, if you'd like to explain what some of these things are. Yes, so the, the one you're seeing right now is um, the small cabinet, and the one you're seeing right now, it's a small table, like, you know, um, on the side of a couch, for example, that's a, a coffee table. This one is a fishing rod uh, older, like to be able to pack your fishing rod. Um, so yeah, and the, and the first one you saw was, um, I have no idea how you call them in English, but in French we say vide poche, which are, you know, like things you put in the entrance of your apartment where you just drop your keys. Ah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, what's funny with them is like, they're made CNC machining as well as, um, uh, wood turning like like manual wood turning so i use both I, li I like to have in my projects a huge mix of traditional skills as well as very modern skills so i will like do like a full wooden countertop like in the old days as well as adding like 3d printing parts and cnc machine parts in it i think that's why i like to mix modern and like older uh, crafts so, so the the um, the key receptacle, the the change receptacle, the first thing that we saw, um, is that a product for you? It's not a commission. It's a product that you sell. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a product. So um, those were made for an exhibition I did uh, last Christmas, and so sometimes I do exhibition where I just build stuff. I do the design and I build, and I do like a real like small batch production, I'd say and then I try to sell them. <laughs> so either I work for commissions, like for designer or inter architects or like clients that would ask like no, no, anything. Either I just do my own design and I then offer it to clients directly. So so that, again, that first thing, that, that was something that you designed in a CAD software and then yeah. used, used software 
to manufacture it as well. So you did some CNC machining and some hand finishing as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's um, so everything is is, uh, is modeled in SolidWorks first, and then so there were a few iteration of like you know design. Um, the first one was like CNC machined on top of it and under it, and I didn't like the machining under. I think it looked a bit too thin, and so I did different iteration, and then. Yeah, I do the SolidWorks uh, model, then I do the CAM in uh, and C Sharp for programmer, the CNC machines. I mean, I do all the cuts and everything for the blank, and then the CNC machines, like most of it, and then I put it in the lathe and finish it by hand, as well as I do um, uh, wax on it, and then I polish the wax by hand. Wow. It's a long process. Yeah, yeah, it's a long process. Everything, <laughs> most of the, th I mean, building things is always longer than it seems. Uh, and the cabinet, that we, the, the drinks cabinet that we saw, yeah. that's got elements of wood in it, but it also seemed to have some metal legs on it as well. Yes, so it has metal legs on it. And, and the funny thing is, that's a project I did one or two years ago. And at that time, I didn't have the capabilities to do the metal working. So uh, a French company did all the legs for me, and then they are uh, epoxy painted uh, in gold. And now the new project that I'm working on right now is quite the same, but everything is made in-house. So you make the legs as well? Yes. <laughs> so this is another skill that you've acquired? Yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I just started welding not that long ago, and I'm trying to progress, and I'm taking, I might take a few classes as well. And, but you know, it's like all of the, when you, when you build stuff and like skill set can transfer a little bit from one thing to another, not a lot, but a little bit when you know how to, I mean, yeah, when, when you know how to use like your hands for one production or like one type of thing, usually it's easier to learn others. You just have to spend some time. Fortunately, the, the only thing that works for that is time and effort and you, nothing is learned in, within the night. Yeah, yeah, and I, I guess you come up with, with lots and lots of different ideas about new products, etc. Yeah, and that's one of the issues because now I, <laughs> there is so many things that I can be built in that, that can be built in my workshop. Um, I have a lot of ideas, but the thing is, I have to focus sometimes <laughs> to stay focused on, like you know, the one I'm building right now, and not changing, like or making new design every two days because. You know, you, you need to find the clients as well. Well, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's that's the thing. But um, obviously, you, you're successful because you're selling these 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 parts and that you're producing, to, and you're getting commissions as well. So obviously, it's successful. Once the word gets out, then maybe more and more uh, business will come your way. Yeah, so that the thing, and I think that's uh, one of the hard part of starting your company is, you know, at first no one knows you, and it's hard for clients to put their trust into you to be able to do commissions, and you know they don't ask for huge projects because they don't know how you work and they don't know what you're going to build. And the more projects you do, the more projects you're getting, so it's exponential. And I think yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get more and more projects now, um, and more and more calls. Uh, about yeah, you know, with it's yeah, it's exponential. The more the more projects you have, the more projects they're gonna people are gonna ask you. Um, that's a good thing, but that's the tricky part at first because you know you can be in your workshop and you can know that you're good, but people doesn't you know know that already. So at first it takes time to be able to you know implement your projects. So, so you go hands. to trade shows to to exhibit your work as well, I guess. Yeah, I do some exhibition, not a lot, but a little bit, and you know, I try to. I'm, I'm, I'm not good on it, but I should be better on, you know, like uh, <laughs> social networks and all of those things because they are super important now. And you know, it's um, in French we say bouche oreille, which is like, you know, people that order you something, they're gonna talk, and that's the most important part. Is you know, like being a, doing your projects very, very well at first. Not, I mean, all the time, but you know, the first projects are important because. When you do a coffee table for one of your clients, your clients are gonna he's gonna have friends at his house and he's gonna say, Oh, look who did that. Oh. And I think that's the way it starts most of the time by you know, just people talking to each other and showing your work. 
gaining a reputation by word of mouth, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you started your business and, and it's, it's becoming successful. Um, and, and because of the way that you use um, the latest tools to try and design and model these things and produce these things, uh, obviously it's come to the notice of Dasso Systems. So you were invited to go and talk at the 3D Experience Forum recently. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, um, uh, that's the system called me multiple times. The first one was for a marketing project, um, and now for a table that I built for videos that you saw at the beginning of this live stream, and the table that you can see on your screen right now. And I was invited two weeks ago at uh, the 3D Experience Forum in Paris to talk about like my user experience and like my you know, like, like it was like a testimony of a customer like mm -hmm. me of how I use Dassault system software and how they are uh, really important in the way I work in my workflow and how I design stuff and how I build my projects. So I was invited <laughs> next to a lot of huge French companies like Renault Group and like four of the biggest defense and military company in France. And everyone was giving like, you know, a customer experience. Uh, presentation and I was the, the you know the craftsman the small company uh, compared to all the other huge ones but what's funny is we kind of all use the same softwares some of them do rockets with them I do tables but it's kind of the same background and the same software and we all use the 3d experience platform and it was super interesting to talk about you know my use of SolidWorks and and C Sharp programmer and the 3d experience platform um, in front of all of these people it was it was a very nice experience, stressful one, but a nice one. In front of a lot of people, like I don't know, five hundred, a thousand, something like that. Wow. <laughs> wow. In a huge theater in France. It must have been really interesting alongside some of these big companies as well. Yeah, it was. It was interesting because I mean, I know that I use a software that is super powerful, but you don't always understand exactly how those huge companies use them. As well as some people <laughs> went to see me after my talk and were, and they are from huge companies and they were asking me like, I mean, they were telling me that it's funny, they didn't know how like soft, small companies like mine use the software. So it's funny because like, it's always interesting to see how the same uh, platform is adapted to different fields and different size companies. So it was, it was very interesting to understand all of that and to see uh, how like Renault Group which is one of the biggest car manufacturers in the world, uses a 3D expense platform and that's all system software is everywhere within their company. Yeah, and there you are doing exactly the same thing, but on a smaller scale. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to kind of defend the, you know, the craftsmen and the and the smaller smaller industry and like, you know, the makers and all of those workshops that we do build stuff, we do need those softwares. There are us as interesting and as important for us as they are for the big ones. Yeah. And I wanted to, you know, defend, like, kind of, like, represent the, the smaller industry and the, and the craftsmen and the, and the makers. And there's no reason why you can't utilize these tools either. They're there. You might as well utilize them and take the benefits from them. Yes, of course. Yeah, they're, they're, um, I mean, there's so many benefits. And for us as well, and even now I was talking during the 3D Expense Forum about like the new offer that SolidWorks has for Maker, where you have in one package, so cheap, <laughs> a lot of softwares and a lot of power to be able to do so many things. It's very interesting. And it, it can help a lot of people start their company and you know develop a project or product. And I think that's what's most important about it is everyone needs it i say i'd say and and everyone can find the real advantage in those softwares either you're building a rocket either you're building like a car or you're building like furnitures like me for example yeah i, I agree entirely it's just it's a different paradigm than it used to be it used to be perceived that these softwares were were they were used by the larger companies and not the smaller companies and that's not the case 
Yeah, and I think that's what scares a lot of people. And it's like, well, even when I say I use SolidWorks and I work with that system and, and people are like, wow, it's, it's like, why would you use like such a big and powerful tool? And I'm like, I mean, why not? Why would I use <laughs> I mean, it's the best to use a powerful tool and well, to, to build anything. And that's kind of the thing is, is it scares people because if you can build a rocket, if you can build a car with that software, most of the people think that, oh, so that's not a software that is made for me. But actually it is. It is a software that is made for a bit of everyone because you can use them to your advantage in any field. Well, you're proof of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I am. I am. And I've seen, like, you know, even, like, even any software, even SolidWorks apps for kids is so powerful. And, and, I've, and when I was working at that's a system in Boston. I saw kids doing amazing projects with that software. And they are already starting, you know, like developing their STEM and, you know, like trying to improve and, and do 3D modeling, even at age like seven or nine or 10. So super young. And I know they're going to be like future SOLIDWORKS users um, uh, and improving their skills in the future. It's just, I mean, the, the thing is for me is why would you not use a software that helps you in every way? Yeah. <laughs> I agree entirely. Getting exposure as early as possible to software is, is essential. Yeah, and, and, and now is, I mean, I was lucky to be, I mean, to discover and to use a startup program because it helped me so much. Mm -hmm. It helped so much. When you start a company and you want to start like a product, for example, uh, you need to design and to do a virtual twin of the project and of the object. And for that, you need a 3D modeling software. And it would be sad to use only the good softwares within like three, five, 10 years of the company um, because it's too expensive at first. With, with the 3D expense, um, like startup program or entrepreneur program, I think, um, you can you, you can use those softwares right away, even at the beginning of the company, even if you don't have a lot of money to start with. And that's that's how that's super helpful for smaller companies. Yeah, I agree entirely. I mean, it's interesting. We talked about uh, share and markup and the benefits of having a virtual twin, um, but lots of people still generate drawings, don't they? People still produce paper drawings. Yeah, and I do. I have some, I have some here and everywhere, and I still, I still do sometimes paper drawings. Um, I mean, from SolidWorks, I print <laughs> drawings because I need them sometimes. Because in the workshop, when you are, you know, within like all your PPI and you're doing something, and you have gloves and everything, and like a visor and a, and a mask, and sometimes you just it's hard to be able to, you know, uh, take your phone out. So yeah. I do sometimes use drawings as well, like uh, 3D drawings where I have all the data that I need to be able to build as fast as I can and be, be like, you know, like uh, not, not doing any mistakes while I'm doing the production. And, but yeah, it's, it's so useful to have both, to have both the 3D models and the 2D drawings as well as the 3D drawings because the, the amazing thing with 3D modeling is you can do so many iteration and while you're still on the computer, you don't have to make 10 tables to figure out that the 10th or the, I know the fifth one or the seventh one is going to be the nice one. Oh. It's going to, you're going to lose a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of energy and a lot of money where you can just do like 20, 50 iteration on your computer and be like, okay, that's not, I don't like the design or, or that's not going to work. And you can do all of those things while on your computer. So when you start, you know, building, actually building in the workshop, 99% of the time, you know, it's going to work. It helps yeah. a lot. <laughs> and, and, and it's interesting to, what you said is it, sometimes uh, a paper drawing is easier because if you've got welding gloves on and you're doing welding, having a mobile device yeah. is <laughs> probably not a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, sometimes, sometimes I do have my phone, but I, I'm not gonna have my computer next to my welding table, or, or like you know, when when you're doing like late turning and you have like coolants everywhere, and like <laughs> it's spraying coolant, and and you have like hot chip of metals everywhere. You don't want to be like you know with an iPad or your computer next to it. 
So it's nice sometimes to just have like a little clipboard with your paper next to it so you can just build without thinking and, and not <laughs> without being afraid that you're going to destroy your computer. So yeah, some, sometimes still useful paper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you mentioned 3D printing as well, so you do 3D printing. Yeah, I do love 3D printing as well because it's, it's an amazing tool. Honestly, it's an amazing tool. I work a lot with Prusa uh, 3D printers and... And sometimes, you know, you can, and, and I, I like it for two reasons. The first one is like in my projects when I do something with like, like really like standard woodworking, I'd say like traditional woodworking, I love to be able to add like, you know, 3D printing in it just to, to add a little bit of modernity and like to show that it's not only traditional, but it's modern as well. And that's, I'd say the first thing. And the second thing is, it's so helpful to be able to, for example, just 3D print your models um, within a couple of hours in like a small scale to be able to validate and just check that everything works the way you want it to. So it's, after, I think like the combination of 3D modeling with 3D printing is very good for doing a lot of iteration in a small amount of time. Um, sometimes my projects are super quick and sometimes I have to design in the morning to build in the afternoon. So you'd rather be sure that, you know, when you have small delay, I mean, small time to build something, you'd rather be sure that you're doing the right thing at the first time. So using 3D modeling and 3D printing for that is super helpful. And you can validate things and you can do like, you know, so many jigs for woodworking, for metalworking, just, there's a lot of tools that I do 3D print and just because you can make weird jigs that would have taken hours to do with, without the, the 3D printers and the 3D modeling capabilities. So, so the 3D printing that you have in-house is all desktop 3D printing? Yeah. Yeah, I do only have desktop 3D printers, and, but I'm working with a friend of mine who has like a startup company that has like a five meter long robot arm that does huge 3D printing with recycled plastics. And we're starting to do like more and more projects together where I do like modern, uh, like, I mean, traditional wood uh, uh, countertops and we do like amazing, like uh, recycled plastic uh, patterns uh, of like for the feet, for example, for the table. We kind of start like, I don't know, uh, uh, some, some nice project that are going to be <laughs> live soon. <laughs> Sounds interesting. I mean, it, it's not a traditional 3D printer. It's a robot with a 3D printer attachment. Yes, yes. It's a startup company that does like, it can print, I think, two meters by one meter by two meter. So it's huge. Wow. Uh, and yeah, and it does like, and it does a lot of generative design. So we can do like uh, generative patterns in recycled plastic 3D printing. And that's super interesting because first you do 3D, you, you do uh, recycled plastic as well as you can pick like, you know, colors and shapes and patterns and and it's nice to mix that to do like a real, you know, melting pot of 3D printing, like super modern technology for like from a startup with traditional woodworking, for example. I mean, traditional woodworking mixed with CNC machining for the countertops, for example. So it's, it's a real mix of skills that goes into the projects. That sounds really interesting. It gives you, gives you a whole new uh, series of products that you can produce, much larger things, can't you? Yes. Yes, and it's, you know, it's, you, you can do huge projects as well as you know that you're going to do recycled plastic, which is a big plus. And you're going to add like, you, you can add a bit of everything. And that's what I like about it, being able to do like a metal structure with like a 3D printing outside and, and a wooden countertop, for example. And, you know, it's kind of like adding everything i mean it's, it's not that you want to add everything into one project but for example the table i did for that system for the 3d expense forum is kind of like one of the only projects since i started my company that shows almost all my skills not everything but a lot of my skills like traditional woodworking and cnc machining and 3d printing and metal turning as well as wood turning yeah the blue table and so you have like inlays you have wooden inlay in the top with the Dassault system compass you have um, 
you, know, you, you have holes on the feet that where you can add different like um, accessories that are 3D printed and made on X design. And you know, you have a, you have a varnish made by hand. You have, a, you know, you <laughs> there is a lot of different skills going into only one project. And I really like it. I really like to be able to, sh to you know, show kind of everything into one project to, yeah. to, you know, for people to understand that there is a lot of things going into doing a table like that. Combining new and old technologies. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important. And I think that's important because a lot of people that are doing traditional woodworking or traditional metalworking for 40, 50 years are not usually a huge fan of 3D modeling and using like CNC machines and like, you know, modern technologies. And you have young people that are 20, 25 right now. I'm, I'm not that much older, but <laughs> I'm 28, but, but I, you have young people that are, you know, only want to work with uh, new technology, only wants to do like woodworking uh, with only CNC machining or, or like 3D printing only. And the thing is you have to combine the two of them. You have to, because sometimes I've seen people to do a tiny chamfer on a, on a piece of wood would program a CNC for half an hour where you can just use like a simple handheld tool that I've been existing for hundreds of years, but it would do the same result within seconds. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to use both and you have to find ways, when is the best to use one or the other. And that's what I love to do is being able to combine the both of them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, um, this, this robot 3D printer with, with, uh, with recycled plastic sounds really interesting. That's the eco ethos in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, ecologically amazing. And, and it opens a lot of new, you know, new ways to build stuff. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm giving classes now, I'm a teacher as well. And I give classes of, uh, about uh, materials and process of fabrication. And you have so many processes that are amazing and that are traditional and I'd say old school, but that works very, very well. But now when you add all of the new processes of fabrication and all the new ways to build stuff, I mean, the possibilities are pretty much endless. Hmm. It, uh, that's really interesting that you've taken the stuff that you've learned and the stuff that you've developed and all this knowledge and you're now passing it on to other people. I mean, I, I like it because, for example, one of my favorite things is to go to, you know, like old workshops where you have people that are like, you know, like 40, 50, 60, 70 years, 70 years old that have been working and, and, you know, like learning a skill for a very long time. And I love to listen to them and to learn from them because it's so interesting and they know stuff that you might never, you know, learn in your life. And sometimes they would give you tips that can like, you know, like save you hours. And, and I'm, I'm trying to learn, I'm, I'm still trying to learn as much as I can from them. And at the same time, I'm trying to teach everything that I'm learning from them and from and by myself um, to my students, you know, all the ways that you can build stuff. There is so many ways and you have good ways, you have bad ways and you have like fastest ways and, and slowest ways. And I'm trying to teach them everything that exists and why would you use that process or this one depending on your project. And I, I actually love giving classes. It's super interesting. But this is all based on experience. Yeah, I think it's based on experience, but not only mine. And that's what's important. It's I'm. I mean, I learned a lot of things with <laughs> with experience, with my own mistakes. You know, I still do mistakes <laughs> a lot of times, and you learn from them. But I also try to, you know, so many times I went, before doing a mistake, I just call a friend of mine that you know is as is twenty years older than me and been doing that for forty years, and I'm like. What should I do here? Am I, am, I, am I doing the good thing? And sometimes the answer is yes, and sometimes the answer, and a lot of times the answer is no. <laughs> and, and then you learn and you're like, okay, and, and you take from their experience and you learn, you learn from them. And so when they say no, usually it's because they've done the mistakes before you. And it's better if you don't do it again. Sometimes you can learn without doing the mistakes. So yeah, I'm trying to pass that on as well and trying to teach my students my experience as well as everyone's 
I mean, everybody's experience that I've learned from. And, and these students are university students? Yeah, they're university students. Actually, they're the design university I used to be a ah. student at. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's gone I'm full teacher. circle. Yes, <laughs> now I'm a teacher there as well. <laughs> yeah. That's yes. fantastic. It's interesting. It's interesting to be able to to teach them and to show them that what I'm doing is a possibility and it's a, it's a real job and you can actually learn learn a lot of stuff and earn money and, and enjoy your job. Because I think for me, it's one of the most important thing is like <laughs> loving what you're doing. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough to to have that. Like whenever I go to my workshop, I'm like, okay, what am I going to build now? And it's so nice to be able to build almost everything. And, and that's kind of the tricky part because possibilities are endless. So you have to kind of you know, funnel your ideas and be able to stay focused on one project or a couple, but not, not too many at the same time. Yeah, and I, I guess you've got lots of ideas about different things that you want to do. But as you say, you've got to temper, temper all those ideas and focus on one thing. Yeah, yeah, you, sometimes you do because sometimes the projects you want to do are not the projects you're doing right now. So you still have to, you know, do the projects for your clients. And then, you know, spend time as well, you know, like just developing skills and, and starting new projects and prototypes and just, and sometimes just do stuff for, for fun, you know, just build stuff for fun and just trial and error. You try something, it works, it doesn't work. It's okay, you'll, you'll, you'll learn from the next time. And for example, right now I'm, I'm doing a, a small table for my apartment and the, the whole feet is, uh, is welded and um, I, so, at least I, if I do the mistakes, it's for me, it's, it's for my own apartment. And so for the, when the clients, or I mean, for the next client asks for a welded uh, base, I know that I can do it without mistakes. Perfect, perfect. It's been really interesting to talk to you, Lucas, and to, <laughs> see, to, to see the products that you produce and the ethos behind them. And, and the fact that you take in traditional skills and modern skills and you you're melding them together and producing these fantastic products. It's been really, really interesting. <laughs> Thank you, David. No problem. Well, as I said to, uh, to the audience, yeah, uh, it's been a pleasure to, to speak to Lucas. Uh, we didn't have any questions come in live, but that's okay. But uh, if you do have any questions, then you can ask them at the next Manufacturing Live. So uh, I'll call it a day there thank lucas once again for his uh, for his involvement in the in the episode uh, and ask you guys to uh, look forward to the next episode of manufacturing live thanks very much